We are live. Hey guys, it's back to Wednesday and it's Wire Lady TV. My name is Heather Boyd. If you don't already know me, I do all kinds of wire art and jewelry videos on uh, YouTube. And today is a national holiday in Quebec, Canada. Not the all of Canada, but in Quebec, it's St. Jean Baptiste. Uh, it's a holiday, June 24th, a national holiday. So if anybody is celebrating, happy St. Jean Baptiste. No parades today, of course. Uh, everything's done uh, online. So uh, we'll celebrate by making some jewelry. Hey, Clarice, you're the first one on. And Mustafa, awesome. You got your Wi-Fi back. That's fantastic. So happy to hear. And I'm going to pull up the um, video on uh, the computer so I can see what's going on. And how's everybody doing? We have a cooler day here. Clarice, I guess it's a little cooler in New York City, hopefully, because, uh, yeah, it's been really, really warm here. So it's nice that things are finally cooling down. So that's amazing. So I'm going to pull up the comments. You guys just say hello. And, um, yeah, I'm going to troubleshoot a couple things today. Uh, we're not going to get too ambitious today. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice summer day. I'm going to show you a few things that I've been working on. Hey, Linda, nice to see you. Awesome, fantastic. So this was one that um, I did yesterday on the Tip Tuesday video. This was inspired by Peggy. She had actually direct messaged me on, um, she direct messaged me on Facebook asking for, well, first of all, she asked what a lariat necklace was. So I explained to her it's the one that wraps around your neck. Hey, Amber, how are you? I'll be out uh, six dogs, wow. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Amber, um, tell me before you go, did you ever get your little uh, doggy necklace? Because I'm troubleshooting another idea today for the plexiglass and I am printed another one of your little cute doggy and I'm gonna try something different. So if you don't get that one in the mail, Peggy said it might've been stolen because they apparently some of the post offices near where you live were broken into and they had some items stolen. So I hope that's not the case. I hope that maybe it got lost in the mail and that I'll get it back and can return it to you. Um, you're still waiting, yeah. So I'm really, really worried that it might've got lost. So. If it comes back to me, I'll send it to you. And if not, if this one turns out, <laughs> I'll send it to you. So we're gonna see. So, but here I wanted to show you the, the Lariat necklace made by, um, I didn't know about the break-ins. That's Peggy that said that. So, hey Inga, how are you? I'm missing some comments here. D -d -d Jeanette says, hi, awesome. So here's one Lariat necklace. And then the other one that I did on the Tip Tuesday was this one. So they're just basic wrap around necklaces that so they just kind of like I can show you they just go around your neck hey Laura sitting at the waffle house whoa cool that's awesome so your restaurants are open now so here's like a little lariat necklace this is my little my little um, uh, flower necklace actually this one I make with kids in uh, craft workshops so we just have take a 15 inch piece of wire and they bead like 15 beads and then I help them bend, bend it around to form the flower. I think I have a tutorial for that one too. But I wanted to show you some of the other lariat necklace that I've made in the past. Accurate necklace and shirt are so cute, thank you. Yeah, this shirt, we went to an event, like a promotional event for a store. Some guy invited us, he met us on Instagram and invited us to this promotional event he was having at a store with live music. And he gave us, uh, Mimi and I, a $20 gift certificate for the store just to get anything we wanted. So we were both able to get shirts like this. So we have mother-daughter shirts, which are super cool. <laughs> and so here's like a, a full-on beaded lariat necklace, which is super cool too. All you need for that is, I'm going to hold it up. It's a long string of beads. And basically you make like a little buttonhole loop on the end. And then you... You know, just bead it all the way down, put a heavier bead at the at this end. And there's a couple ways you can wear this. You can uh, wrap it around, like wrap it around twice, and then pop that one through the, pop that one through the, the, the loop, like a buttonhole, which is super cute. And then the other way you can do it, if I remember well, uh, this is just a long piece of tiger tail and it's crimped in place. So this is something you could definitely do. And the other thing I think I did was I just folded it. This is an easier way to do it. You just fold it in half and put it around. And is that what I did? I'm actually not sure now how I did that. Hmm. 
no, maybe I didn't do it that way. I think there's a way to fold it and put it around. Anyways, I forget. <laughs> That's okay, it's all good. Let's go to the next one. So here is this one, the rainbow color is nice. So this one, uh, oh, this is the one where I could do it that way. Sorry about that. So this one, it's basic. I do have a tutorial for this one. So, hey Peggy, how are you? I was just talking, shouting you out because we did, um, I was showing the lariat necklaces that you were asking me about. So I'm just showing off some of the older lariat necklaces that I did. You're so sleepy, oh no. So here's, here's this one. So basically there, it's a long piece of cotton cord and the beads are strung like along and crimped in place. And there's a little tassel bead at the end that I made. And then you kind of fix it in the position you want. So this can actually be pulled over. This one's nice, say eh, Clarice? It can be pulled over and worn long like that, like a little, a little kind of a long necklace. Or you can, thank you, Inga. So you can just hold it like this and then put it around your neck and then pop that one through here. So that's an easier way to wear it because you just fold it around. So that one's kind of cool too. So I'll link up the tutorials for those ones in the description. And then one other one I wanted to show you was this one. And this was made by some uh, young men with autism. Uh, uh, someone I met at a craft show, uh, her son has autism and she was running a program teaching jewelry making to young men with autism and they were sharing, uh, selling them to make money for it, you know the group type of thing. And it was a really great initiative. I'm not even sure if she's still doing it. That was about 10 years ago. So basically this is a long braided piece of like little tubes of fabric that have been braided together. And then sort of like she, she twisted it with a wire and everyone is asleep with Heather. <laughs> and then here's a little dangle here. And then we're gonna, all you do to wear it is they've got like little dangly beads twisted to the end of the of the braided fabric this is actually a really cute one i could do a tutorial for something like that so you just bend the whole thing in half and same thing you just put it around your neck and then you can stick these two through there so it's hard to see with my other necklace but that's the idea or if you want to wear it like wrap it you can definitely like wrap it around a couple of times and do do that type of thing too. There's all kinds of possibilities for those. So if anybody has fabric, I went to sleep after one and was awake before four. That was me yesterday uh, because we had some worker guys come to the house. So I, I feel your pain. I don't usually go to bed before two anyways. But uh, so today I'm going to, I'm gonna flip the screen and we're gonna have a look at what we can do with this plexiglass piece. So let me flip the screen around. Bling. Perfect. Here we go. Here's the lariat necklaces from yesterday that were inspired by Peggy. Peggy, you did a wonderful job on yours as well with the little the little uh, wound around ring. And then this one was the other one. And actually somebody suggested instead of like winding the ring like that to do it more simple. And so maybe what I'll try is before I get started, and unfortunately I don't remember her name, but it was someone that commented on the post about, I think she's a nurse, and she was saying she, she made, a, or somebody made her an eyeglass holder with a simple ring like that. So let me just, before I get started with the other project, I'm gonna try that. So rather than doing them twisty, they're cute, they're super cute twisty, but if you want something more streamlined, I'm just gonna see if it's gonna work, because I'm not, I wasn't 100% sure if it was gonna work. So this is 18 gauge wire. Uh, Suki Suki says, I love upcycling my jewelry. Great idea, yes. Upcycled jewelry is fantastic. Um, ba -da -ba -da. So I have these pill bottles here and I'm gonna just remove these ones. So depending on what size ring you want, I love this little you know gadget thing with putting my pill bottles together. And I just found my pliers, yay! I saw that's a good idea for sunglasses. Yes, yes. Do you remember her name, Peggy? I don't remember her name now. I think it might have been a new member. So now what you're going to do is uh, just, let's just try it and see if it's going to work. Because the reason I wrapped it was twofold. One was to make it more solid, and the other thing was just to um, hold the two rings together. So let's see if we could just, I can't remember either. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll uh, look after. Uh, so this is, 18 gauge wire 
I'm wondering if maybe even you could use like a 16 gauge wire might be more solid for something like this because I have a feeling the trouble with the 18 gauges it's going to like slightly come apart that's the thing and so if you do something like that let's try it uh, this might be a little large for the ring the smaller you rate make the ring the the um the more solid it's going to be so let's just take this and just bring it around and the idea is you want to pull it super tight but then you also want to cut that really flush so it's not going to come apart so if we take this and then cut that and then we really want to, I might have cut it too short now, but the idea is you just get it in there so it's really flush. And then basically all you would have to do is, first of all, make sure these are like super lined up so they're not like uh, skewed or anything. And then once you have them in the right position, then you can just bring this and bring this one around here. So you will have like a little intersection, but it'll be a little more streamlined than if you wound it all the way around. So if we do that, and then the same thing, we're gonna bring that in here. So that's like flush. I cut it a little short too. So that's the idea. So you could do something, I think that's pretty well what she did. Hey Debbie, how are you? Awesome. Oh, I love you too. That's fantastic. Ella, 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 that looks so cute. I love the way Ella, Ella, Ella looks. It just looks so cute. So here's um, the trouble with this. You see it comes apart a little bit. So that was one possibility for the ring, but um, I'm not sure, maybe she used, maybe she used a thicker wire. Maybe that's why hers did not come apart. Um, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I guess in theory, you could even use a key ring for something like that. Can you make a video on how you sell your wire art? Actually, that's ironic that you asked me, Mustafa, because I have a, a playlist on YouTube about selling jewelry on Etsy. So uh, I have a friend of my daughter's that wanted some mentoring about selling. And so I, um, I already had these videos and I just put them in a playlist to kind of help her out with that. So you could definitely check out the, the playlist. And I have a lot of key rings. Key rings would work, okay? And so that's one possibility, but I find the wire a little thin. And then if you're using a thicker wire, this one, whoa, I just cracked that. So this one is thicker, but it's very soft. But say you had a thicker wire that wasn't so soft, you might be able to do something like that, and that might work too. But I'm finding that it's really, I like the twist around because it holds the rings together. And so that's the trouble with these, is they seem, they seem to come apart. And then if we do the twist around, let's just see how it works. We bring this around here. And uh, yeah, there's some other good YouTube channels that have a lot of uh, great information about selling jewelry as well. It's not, you know, I was going to try to get into that and do more videos like that, but I just find time-wise, I don't have a lot of time to do that. But every now and then I'll just, you know, give people advice and stuff. So here's, if we just twist that one around here, so rather than wrap that one around the outside, because it's gonna be really bulky, what if we just bring this around? Let's just bring this around here just to see. But see, this, I'm finding it is bulky and I would have loved to see that, that woman's um, eyeglass thing up close because I think it is hard to create a ring that's very discreet. This isn't too bad, but you're always gonna have that little bit of an intersection and they might come undone. So the other thing you could do is just do a double, like maybe do a double ring and uh, wrap it with a thinner wire. We could try that too. So say if we got the, go back to the 18 gauge wire. Is this the 18 gauge? I'm losing track. No, here's 18 gauge. So let's try this one again. And uh, I'm always a bit of a perfectionist trying to figure these things out. So I think you just have to experiment to see what works best. Um, Mustafa says, yay, because I just got an order for a name keychain. Fantastic. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. So, so that would be something. And just a, like a heads up, if you do sell on Etsy, it's good to have like a niche. So say you specialize in keychains or something that could be really cool. You can hang a bead on the piece, uh, and not cut off that last bit. You could definitely do that. That would be a great idea. And actually that, 
could work out. It might be a little distracting for the lariat, but definitely for another, another design, you could definitely do that. That's a great idea. So let's just bring this around. Now, if you find your round form is too big, because sometimes you need a smaller form because the wire will like bounce back. So sometimes I actually use a, a smaller ring form than what I need and then I'll just wind it around. So let's just try that. We'll just try to wind it around a smaller form. In fact, why don't we, why don't we just pull it out again? Let's start again. Sometimes it's easier to start again. Uh, her name was Val Milner. I looked her up. Okay, so that was, is VA or Val? Maybe V, maybe VA stands for something different. I'm not sure. So uh, yeah, so I'll have to tell her that I tried a couple of those rings and uh, we'll see how it goes. So just VA, cool, interesting, that's fun. Wonder how you pronounce that. V, just VA maybe or the. So there we go. So we're gonna do like a double ring here. So then what you wanna do to make sure it stays together as better as, as good as possible, give it a good press. And then we're gonna just take this apart now, this is where we go, what if we just wind it without bending the ends? So this is, you know, that's always a question, what if? And that's always a good question to, your, to ask yourself because sometimes we don't know how things are going to work. She's new to us and is incredible. I've been wondering the, the pronunciation itself. We'll have to ask her. My dad was called Vi or Vi. That's, that's cool. Yeah, it must be short for something, or maybe it's her nickname, or maybe it's just her username, because some a lot of people don't like to use the real name on Facebook, which makes sense. So it could just be a username. So this is the 24 gauge wire. So what if we just wound it around with a thinner wire? Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, his name was Vilas. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. Is that how you pronounce it? V Vilas or Vilas? That's a really cool name. That's really interesting. No, I like it. So there we go. So we're gonna wind this around and I don't know how closely I'm gonna have to do my winds together, but we're going to see. But this this might be a good alternative if you want the winding around of the ring to be more discreet because otherwise it might be like, you might find it a little bit thick. So let's just try this to see how it goes. I had to say no because she was arguing for the price. Yeah, that can that can definitely happen. And that's why sometimes it's better to have like a shop with your fixed prices and then people don't, uh, you know, don't um, bargain uh, for that. But Mustafa, you have lots of time. Uh, just take your time and, you know, do some research and see what people are liking. Actually, the girl that I'm mentoring for her Etsy shop, she's young, she's like 13, so, uh, so yeah, she definitely has a lot of time and she doesn't need, you know, to rely on the income. So now's the time for her to experiment and stuff just to see how it goes. So let's just keep this wind relatively loose to see how it goes. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. It's pronounced as I. Cool. Vi oh, so, um, so Vilas. That's cool. Very interesting. I like that. So my dad's name is Ian. You can't can't go too wrong with that. That's just uh, very, very straightforward. No question about how to pronounce it. And uh, he's uh, Scottish heritage, so I guess it's a Scottish name. His name is uh, Ian Cameron Boyd. Yeah. So let's go around and around. And just I'm not hundred percent sure what I'm going to do at the end. That's that's why I'm just kind of uh, trying to figure it out as I go. Nice name. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my brother is Andrew Cameron Boyd, so he took on the middle name, and I uh, probably it was like my dad's dad dad's name as well. So uh, some people pass on their names in the family. Yeah, my name's Scottish uh, Heather, and because of my I guess from my my dad's uh, Scottish heritage. So yeah, so this is kind of nice because it's actually a little bit. I'll show you the difference. It's a little bit thinner then wrapping it with the regular, you know, the same wire. So we're going to see there's a Dr. Boyd here. Yes, actually Boyd is a pretty common name. You know, I'm, I was, I'm pretty surprised. A lot of people ask me, you know, if they're, if I'm related to certain people and, um, I, I will say, well, there's lots of Boyds around. So it's, uh, 
it's not unusual to hear the name for sure. So now we're as we're getting to the middle, this is the question, what are you going to do now? So I think the only thing I would suggest, so these don't come apart, I mean, there's a couple options. One would be to actually turn the thick ends back and forth. And then the other option is maybe just to take these two ends and twist one one way. Okay, we're just going to twist one of the 24 gauges one way. I think you'd have to be careful not to do too much wear and tear on this. And then you have to definitely like pinch it so it's flush. And then this end too, you have to like bring it down and also cut it so it's very flush in there. So, and try not to cut through many layers of Sometimes my eyesight's not great, so I'll cut through a few layers at once. So there's a bit of a lump there. It's not too bad. I think it's pretty solid because those wires are holding it together. So here's some like alternatives for to do a ring for your lariat necklace. So here's how it how it looked with the um, here's how it looked with the the same wire twisted, a thinner wire, and then just finishing it off. So I actually think I like the original version and it's certainly much easier to do. So if you guys have other ideas for making little rings like that, definitely let me know. I like Debbie's idea of adding the little um, uh, bead on the end. And uh, yeah, I think there's lots of pos uh, possibilities on here. Um, my mom does online selling, so that can help. That's w awesome. What does your mom do online, Mustafa? I'd be curious to know. Sorry, I just took a sip of water. I love the original and the other one like it. Cool. Yes, it's like a vine. You're right. And then um, I think I might have even said in the video you can add little beads around the outside. That would be cute, like little seed beads or something. So that's definitely a possibility. So enough of that. Let's get to the doggy. There we go. Let's see what we can do with with him. And we've got our little pieces of plexiglass that I that I cut. Oh no, I just dropped one, of course. And if you haven't already seen it, check out the video for how to cut these circles out of uh, plexiglass. Because if you try to cut them with scissors, it's going to crack and shatter. But we're going to, your baby girl, how's her tooth, uh, Amber? Is everything fixed up with her tooth? That was, yeah, that's uh, very sad when our, when our pets are suffering. So here is something I'm going to try. I don't know if it's going to work. This is copper foil, guys. I don't know if any of you have ever done um, uh, stained glass, but copper foil is what they use in stained glass to... Uh, uh, put the solder around the outside of the glass. So I'm going to show you an example. This, I used to do a lot of stained glass. I didn't realize you were going to do her again. I'm going to try to do her again, Amber. So we're going to see how we, how we do. Oh gosh, this is not the piece I wanted to bring because I thought this one was soldered, but it's not. Look what I did here. And I totally forgot about this. This is actually a leather cord that I prop my stuff I don't even know if I did a groove in the in the glass because now I don't remember but I glued it around the outside of the piece uh, the leather cord so how interesting is that when you forget you've done something so she had to have all three incisors also Ooh, ouch 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 oh shit I wonder if she'll have her tongue stick out because of that. Oh, geez. Oh, no. So, guys, I'm going to just be right back. I have to find the actual piece that I meant to bring, which is solder. Sorry, I had to run to the back of the house to find this because I thought I had brought one that was soldered, but I didn't. So here we go. Okay, so this one, actually the beads were from my friend uh, who's from Singapore. She bought these beads in Malaysia and uh, I made, uh, she had a long necklace and I cut it into three pieces and I made her, uh, my friend Bibi, my friend Allison, and myself, these matching necklaces. So that was really cool. And um, 
my mom sells jewelry and Indian Western clothes. Cool, very nice. So so yeah, so this is this one's really fun. And this, do you see how the outside is uh, silver? So what you do is you actually put this copper foil around the outside of the glass and then you solder it. Now, I'm not sure if I have a tutorial on how to do that. I might. If I don't, there are other YouTube channels that probably have one. Suki Suki, my boss, soldering skills are awful. Yeah, it's 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 a learning curve. I actually stopped doing it because it's I don't like the fumes. I find them a little a little um toxic. So uh, I think if you do a little bit, it's okay though. But I'm not going to solder today because this is uh, plexiglass. So you don't want to you don't want to um, melt the plexiglass, of course, but I just thought I would try it to, to attach the two pieces together. If it doesn't work, I'll have to glue it. So we'll see. Soft food for Kelly. Oh, she already eats soft food, but treats are, oh yeah, treats, yeah. Actually, that's funny that you should say that, Amber, because um, I don't know if you guys like biscotti, but I love biscotti. And <laughs> I guess they're a little bit the same texture as dog treats because they're very hard right and so I love the taste of biscotti but I find them very hard and I don't always like to dip them in the in my coffee but uh, someone gave me a gift basket the other day and the biscotti were amazing this woman makes them in her home and they're slightly they're a little bit not soft but like just a little bit soft and um and they're so amazing and I was I was I was so amazed that I said they were the best biscotti I've ever had they were really delicious so um, I don't know if she sells them on their own, but she makes gift baskets and sells the gift baskets. So this part got a little bit crunched up. So I'm just going to cut this. This is the copper foil. And I hope I'm going to be able to wind it in a way and have it not all fall apart. And it actually might not even be wide enough because, and I do have wider copper foil. So we're going to see. Okay, so um, there we go. So Wendy... Oh, hey, Wendy, how are you? Wendy, your comment got bleeped out because I guess you said the word idiot. But <laughs> anyways, that's YouTube is very suspicious. Eh? They would they, they consider that a spam comment, even though it's kind of funny. But uh, anyways, I, I allowed it, Wendy. There we go. Some idiot at Michael's tried to sell me solder for wire. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not. You don't want to use it as wire. It's for attaching things together. Do you have a tutorial on how to size the image? I don't, but what I do to size the image, I basically, Amber sent me a photo and I saved the photo and I, I um, what did I do? I, I dragged it over to a Word page on my, I don't think it's called Word, it's called Office or something on my Mac. And I basically cropped it so it was like square and then I shrank it. I did, I copied it and, and changed the size several times to just decide which one I wanted. So that's basically how I did it. See, I have the same, the other ones here that were too big. So I just put a bunch on a word page and made them different sizes. And that's the best way to do it. So Wendy's good. Awesome. Uh, I'm good. Yeah. How about some uneducated person? Well, if they work at Michael's and told you that, I would maybe talk to a manager and, and tell them that their employee is Maybe not necessarily an idiot, but maybe just not very well informed. I mean, they do have a lot of products in the store that they have to keep track of. So, uh, but yeah, maybe just a little talking to from the manager would be good. So here's a little puppy and we're going to try to, uh, Mrs. Heather, did you see what I texted? No, I did not. Did you send me an email, Kat? Um, because I haven't been on my email for a few hours. So if you sent me an email, I might not have seen it yet. Or if it was another day, sometimes I have problems with my emails getting deleted. Do you know when you, you like your cursor's on an email and you go to another email and then you delete a bunch of them, but then that other email gets deleted by mistake. That happens to me all the time. So, uh, so there we go. So we're going to try hold these in place that's the tricky part and then just what you're going to do is take the copper foil as best you can and just centering it that's the hard part is to get it like centered around here so sometimes if you have to pull it back if it doesn't center well you have to have a like a bit of a sense for what 
where it is. I wonder if there's an easier way to do that. Maybe if we did it this way, I'd actually be able to see if it's centered. Okay, so let's go around here. I'm gonna be missing comments for a few minutes while I do this. And basically, we're just going to bring this around. And like I said, we're not gonna solder this because I don't wanna melt the plastic, but I'm just trying this to see if it's gonna work because I had this um, copper foil. So I thought I would just try it. You could pr you could buy it online, but I bought it at a stained glass store. I mean, I would have bought this before online shopping was a big thing. Now it's starting to peel off. So what you're going to have to do is to get it so it won't peel, is let's just go ahead and start pushing the ends around. And then it's gonna, it actually seems to be the perfect size. It's 3 16th of an inch and I forget that, I guess, you know what? I think the width of the plexiglass was 1 16th. So then the 3 16th uh, size copper foil works really well. So let's just clip it because it's getting twisted now. Okay, so we're gonna just clip that and just keep going around. And we're gonna go around and around. So I don't know if you guys have stained glass doors locally but uh, you know, the Amazon and stuff seem to be working well now. Uh, things have opened up a little bit. Some craft stores might even have it. I don't know if Michaels has stained glass supplies. I mean, if they sell, if they sell solder, they should have it, right? So, so there we go. So then it, you just overlap the end a little bit so that it's secure, cut it. Okay, I'm seeing all kinds of comments here. Uh, oh, do, 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 I love working if they only gave me 10 hours a week. Okay, missing. I thought, I never thought of plexiglass. Great idea. Do this on wooden circle earrings. You could probably do it on wooden circle earrings. The only reason I'm doing this, I wouldn't, because you wouldn't want to solder wood, right? But the only reason I'm doing this is because I really want a way to hold the two plexiglass pieces together uh, in a way that's an alternative to glue because in the original video I hot glued them so this is just an alternative to that uh, it's actually probably going to show a little bit yeah see this this got pulled over a little bit I don't know if I can pull that back it's it's not perfect but you know what it's fine I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too fussy about it it's going to go over a little bit but that's going to be its charm, right? So let's just go ahead now with your fingernail, you go around and you just rub it because you really need it like super solid on there. And like I said, one side's going to be a little bit, you know, too covered up, but rather than pull it back and, and take too much time, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And the advantage of having it sealed in like that is so there won't get like water and stuff on your image because you want to protect your image and then the other advantage is it kind of looks cool so so even though it's a little off to the side there I think it should be fun fine and and doggy's kind of brown anyways so so there we go so there that's like that so now the thing we need to do is uh, get those together so I could do copper but I don't think I have 24 gauge copper, so I am going to try. I have 20 gauge, I have 24 gauge uh, gold, and I wanted to try to wrap it in a slightly different way. So I have some beads, and let's see what we can do with the beads. Okay, so I wish I had a little dish or something, because these are gonna go all over the place, but maybe if I just put the ring here, and then put a bunch of beads in the ring, they're not gold gold, but I wanted something metallic, so they're gonna be good enough. And uh, how did I do this? So we're gonna get a couple pieces of the 20 gauge wire and bring this around. And we need enough to go around the piece. Okay, so, well, let's just measure it this way. If we go around, say, a couple of times, that should be good. So if we do that, we're going to cut a piece and we're going to do this and I want to be able to 
I think just start it very simply. I'm gonna do it, try, try to do it this way and see how it goes. Let me just, I'm just thinking for a second. I we'll wanna do it that way. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, I'm gonna try like this. So I'm going to do it in a way that these have to be slightly spaced apart. And then that one would go, because we want to hold this in place. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you know what? I might end up pulling these apart. Let me just see. This is going to be, if these just go, we're gonna, yeah, it should be fine. Okay, so let's try to do a bit of weaving and see how this is going to go. And I don't want that too, too long. And we'll cut a piece of the 24 gauge wire and try to wrap it with some with some um, beads inside because when I originally did it I just did the the back and forth weave and I forget what that kind of weave was called somebody had told me what it was called um, and now I forget so if you guys think of the name just let me know because it was it's just a really basic weave because honestly I don't do a lot of wire weaving so so there we go uh, Debbie says my first rings I made with solder and I found it later I can't wear it. That's the trouble because some solder actually has lead in it, which is extremely toxic. And also it can turn your finger gray or green or something. So yeah, not a great idea to use solder for, for rings or for almost any uh, jewelry actually. So now what I want to do is try to do like a kind of a weave where we add the beads. And maybe I won't do it too close to the end because I can always, I can always um, slide it over after. So I'm going to just start by winding this around. Okay. And if I decide not to use the beads, I'll just leave them out. But so we start here and then let's bring this between the wires. Okay. We'll go that way. And then let's try to put a bead on there. Now my wire is super long, but it's better to be too long than too short. Now I'm wondering if these beads are too small, but I'm going to try them because I don't want the beads too big either. So we're going to see how it goes. Okay. Uh, corset, corset weave. That was it. I think you're right. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. I really have to up my weaving skills because, uh, uh, I see so many beautiful things in the group, although I'm not even sure I want to go that route because there's so many people that are really good at it. So I kind of like my quirky stuff. So I might, I might just stick with that and let the, let the wire, the professional wire weavers do their things. So, so we're going to just wind this around here. Wire braiding is fun. Yes. Wire braiding is a great idea too. So this is, so we'll just do a full wind around here and then underneath. And then maybe what I'll do is in between each bead, I'm just going to do a just a plain wire one. Let's just see how that's going to look. So if we go around here and then bring this up and then another bead, this wire is very long, but that's okay. And I'm not gonna do them too tightly together just because it's gonna take a long time so I think what I'll do is I'll keep them relatively spaced apart. The copper foil doesn't like super match this wire, but I think just to get the idea, and even if I don't like completely finish it, if I, I might end up going back and trying it with some copper wire, but we're gonna see how it goes. So let's do a little bit. I kind of like the way it looks with the beads in there. So we're going to see how it goes. I was born in Detroit. If we drink from the Michigan River, it had too many mercury. Yeah, well, that's the problem. And uh, they say that about tuna fish, too, that it's probably not good to eat tuna fish because it has a lot of mercury in it. I actually don't eat canned fish anymore. I used to eat tuna and salmon and stuff, and I don't, I don't really eat it anymore. I don't really like eating things out of a can anyways. I just, uh, after a while, they start to taste like the can, so I don't even bother. So... So there we go. We're just going to keep going down. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the detail of what I'm doing. It's pretty basic. Like like Peggy said, it's I guess it's called a corset weave. 
so that's uh, that's cool because I, I don't really know all the terminology. I know there's something called a Viking weave, which I'm not sure what that is either. And but it's kind of, I really like it with the beads. I find it really fun. So we're just gonna keep going around. Uh, I get pouches of tuna. Yes, I've seen that. That's something new in the last few years. You can get like tuna in a in a bag type of thing, and I think that's a great idea because. Uh, I think it uh, it tastes much better that way. I know when I buy spaghetti sauce, I would never buy it in a can. I, I buy it in the um, in jars and even like tomato puree, they call it passata. I buy that in a jar too because the, um, the canned uh, tomatoes taste really can, canny, can-like. So there we go. We're gonna just keep going with this. I think we have to go for a little while because to make it look like anything at all, it's going to have to, we're going to have to be able to add quite a few beads in it. And then we'll just kind of bring it around like that. So in the meantime, if you guys have any questions about um, wire art or, or anything, just let me know. And Trisha, hi Trisha, there we go. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Trisha's Pink Poodle Studio. That's cool. So why is your channel or your account called Pink P Poodle Studio? Are you, uh, do you do dog grooming? Amber would like, uh, would relate to that. Although Amber, I don't think you do grooming. I think you do more like dog sitting and stuff. I don't know, maybe you do grooming as well. I'm not sure. Heather, the bolo video is great. Awesome. Did you make one? Because you said you said you were going to try to make a bolo. That's that's really cool. Yeah, I had fun with that one. That was just sort of troubleshooting. That was one of the live streams. Is Amber here today? Amber was here, but Amber said she had to go out to um, walk six dogs. So she might have stepped out. It's a jewelry studio. Oh, cool. I own standard poodles. That is so cool. I love that. Very nice. It's a great name. No, it's really fun. And what kind of jewelry did you do you make? Do you make mostly wire stuff? I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna pull this around. Debbie had a comment, and it's not showing Debbie. So uh, so there might be something wrong with your comment. YouTube is very um, is very how do you say uh, it? It just if it it if it sees anything suspect, it just it just hides comments so sometimes it's just the wording we use and uh you know you can't kind of get around it. it sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it either yes you're very right very minimal grooming that's what i thought yeah for sure <laughs> so let's go around here we're going to keep going and round and round and this one's down here. It's not long enough yet, so I'm gonna, I'm, if anything, I'm gonna stretch them around. But let's just see how it might work. Like, my idea was to put it around the outside. I think it's kind of cute. I don't know how well it's going to hold in place. And I'm not sure with the, with the um, copper foil if it's gonna look very nice, but I might kind of push the copper foil out a little bit too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how that goes, but let's just keep going with it to see what we can do. And then if it doesn't work, well, you know, we tried. That's, that's, that's always the case. So here, I'm going to move these out of the way because they're going all over the place. It's cute so far, eh? I like that idea of doing weaving with the, with the um, beads. I think it looks really cute. I think it's a good day. Trisha uh, says, I'm brand ambassador for Jesse Beads. I love them. Okay, yes, yes, that's right. I think I've seen their stuff before. Yeah, they, there was, they were at a big conference or something at one point, although I guess all the bead conferences are not uh, happening right now because uh, of all the COVID stuff, which is unfortunate. There were a lot of like festivals and exhibitions here that were happening in Montreal. Like Montreal's a big hub for uh, festivals in the summer, but all of our festivals were canceled. So no Just for Laughs, no Jazz Fest, no no um, NASCAR, all of that stuff was canceled. So we're just, even today, it's a national holiday. And, um, 
and what's happening is they're doing everything online. So there's all like concerts and stuff online. Canada Day is going to be the same thing. I imagine in the States, the uh, 4th of July, they'll do, be doing a lot of online like concerts and stuff because we're still not allowed to have big gatherings. So it's very, very mellow this year. I use a bunch of different designs techniques and enjoy wire work. Yeah, wire is super fun. Yeah, I love it. And uh, I haven't done a lot of other type of jewelry. I did take a course on uh, silversmithing and uh, I enjoyed it, but I, would, I wouldn't I would want to do it. I, I love wire because it's very portable. You can travel with it. Uh, you can make things quite quickly. So when you have an idea in your head, you can get it done very quickly. Whereas with silversmithing and, and soldering, I find it's very a very lengthy process and um, it just didn't work for me. All can Becky says, I'll cancel here, but people will still do fireworks. Yeah, yeah, I heard some fireworks last night because a lot of people do. We live near the river and a lot of people do uh, set off fireworks uh, by the water. So we, I didn't see any, but I heard a lot. And I imagine tonight there'll be tons because it's the official day today. Uh, I'm not a big fireworks person personally, so... Uh, Wendy Hobby Lobby had things you can use, ribbons. Okay, nice. Yeah, Hobby Lobby is a place we don't have in Canada. Uh, we have Michaels. Um, some We have some supplies at Walmart. Some of our art stores have uh, jewelry supplies, but we don't have Hobby Lobby. We don't have Joann's. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of places we don't have. Oops, this one I don't want a bead in the middle. We're just going to do just a wire one there. Bring this one up. And pretty soon, I think we're going to be able to try the try the uh, the wrap. So I want to bring it out as much as I can. It's looking kind of cool. I actually just like the look of that. That would make a great bracelet. And actually, I'm starting to do uh, de develop some designs for the next challenge, the next 10 day challenge. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it won't be until the fall. We're going to do a 10 day bracelet making challenge. So look out for that. Mark your calendar, September 1st. We'll do that, and uh, and then um, we could go. Oh, I deleted the message. Okay, yeah, because sometimes uh, sometimes comments don't go through. So if it doesn't go through, it's either YouTube, uh, you know, just just censoring it, or or you know, for whatever reason. Like sometimes it's no, not even any particular reason, and um, I think they just don't like. Uh, outside links as well and stuff like that so uh, so there we go so it's coming along and we're going to be done in no time and when I run out of this wire of course I'm just going to have to stop I cut it a little shorter because it was way too long and when it's way too long it's hard to work with so Wendy says love Hobby Lobby but it's an hour away oh yeah that's that's hard when you live in an area that's far from the stores um, definitely. We have a Michael's not too far. It's like a 20 minute drive. Uh, actually, there ne before there were no Michael's in Quebec. I had to go home to see my parents in Ottawa to be able to go to Michael's. So now at least we have Michael's, which is great. There's about four or five locations in Montreal now, which is really nice. So there we go. Let's just stick this one here. Oh, I'm really running out of wire. And I'm going to just go down one more time. And then that'll be it for the weave. We have no choice. So now let's go ahead and cut that and see what we're going to do. And I'll probably have to space them apart to be able to fit. Uh, we don't have any dollar stores in India. Oh, really? Eh? That's uh, Yeah, we take them for granted because they're everywhere. But uh, so Mustafa, where would you buy your supplies if you don't have, uh, or do you have art stores or jewelry stores or in the, in the market? Like sometimes in the markets, you can buy all kinds of cool beads and supplies and stuff. So this is cool. And then you can like space it out as you want and space it in. So let's go ahead and clip, clip that end and see how it's going to go. So what I want to do is I want to bring this more to the end, I think. I might end up changing that plan, but we're going to see. We're space it out, and then we're going to wind it around a round form. Let me straighten these a little bit. Okay, local art stores. Yeah, so that's that's probably the best the best way to go. So here I'm going to get back my round form here. Just have a little sip of water. This is my water glass. I always put an elastic on it. We especially do this at the cottage because 
and at my parents' place because everybody has the same water glass. So to tell whose water glass is whose, we put an elastic around it and uh, that works really well. So now we're going to take this and wind it around and around here. Yeah, I drink a ton of water, like winter, summer, but especially summer. So if we wind this around, now we're going to see that it's, oh, it's pretty good. I thought it would be, I thought it might be too, uh, too big. So the, now what we want to do is, because this will go through here. So let's just go ahead and take these and put them through this end. Okay, so this is, I don't know, I don't remember if this is how I did the original one, Amber, um, I forget. I'd have to look at the video again and see. I think I might have left those ends uh, loose, but this kind of works well. Like you just have a loop there and then just pull them through. And so now we're gonna, I'm just finding this too much here. So I'm gonna see if I can push it back a bit. The, the copper foil, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I just find, because especially it's different than the, color of the of the uh, wire let me just push it back it might be a hot mess but let's just do it i find it a little distracting so with my nail i'm just going to push it back a little bit and see how it goes especially this part around here where it got really thick but if we just it's it's foil right so you're kind of sculpting it a little bit it's like doing a sculpture out of aluminum foil, which I've definitely done before. I've definitely done that with children. I used to do a lot of summer camps at my friend's uh, art gallery. And one of the classes I did was we made uh, sculptures out of wire and aluminum foil. And then we covered them, not with paper mache, because I find paper mache takes a long time to dry, but we mixed up white glue and water and we just covered them with tissue paper and uh, the, the foil sculptures, and then we blow dried them to let them dry. And then they were, the kids were able to paint them. We made birds, they were able to paint them. They were able to add uh, feathers to them. And it's a way to make a paper mache sculpture that doesn't take like 24 hours to dry. Remember when we were kids, our, our moms would make us, or maybe some of you guys remember, uh, they, uh, my mom used to make me uh, glue out of flour and water and then we cut big strips of newspaper and make paper mache and then it smelled I remember the smell of it you know it smelled like flour and water basically which is what it was and then we'd uh, you'd have to wait like days for it to dry because it would be so saturated with the glue it was ridiculous so uh, so there we go so we're going to go around here and just I'm just pushing it back from the center so it's still like secured in place it's still glued in place but it doesn't cover the image so this this part you can you know play around with uh, and if you don't have copper foil if you don't want to buy copper foil just glue the sides together with some hot glue or whatever glue you have that dries quickly that is going to seal it so and you might even be able to use another kind of tape like a clear tape might work who knows you can definitely experiment nail polish maybe yeah so we're gonna go around here so here is doggy super cute now let's see if we can get it in the frame like it thank you so we're gonna bring that in here and you want to make sure these are spaced more or less evenly around like if there are any gaps you can bring in the gaps a little bit and uh, they don't have to be perfect but if you want to make them somewhat even you can definitely go around that and make them even so now we're going to bring this one in here this is the hard part of course or the other thing you might want to do is push the beads out because you don't want them taking up space so why don't we go ahead i don't know if there's an easy way to do this if i could do it with my pliers push the beads out a little bit so they're not pressing in on the plexiglass yeah, I hadn't thought about that because you don't want them taking up space. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but maybe when I just, maybe when I actually put the plexiglass in, uh, like inside the frame, maybe it's going to work itself out. So let's just bring it here. I kind of want to hold that up a little bit. What can I do? If I could just, I just find it's, it's too flat on the table 
and I need to lift it up a bit. So let me just put a little prop underneath it to hold it up a little bit. So if I just take this and use my, make a little round form a little bit. Let's just prop it up a little bit because I find it's, it's flat on the table, so it's hard to access it. So let's just bring this here. Okay, this is a little prop. So we're just gonna prop it up a little bit and then bring this one here and see if we can get this going. So if we just wanna, first of all, make sure at what, how tight we wanna get it. So I think it's gonna be, yeah, we can start. Bring this around. Let's start with one side first. So if we start with one side first, okay, we're gonna tighten it up a little bit, but we might need it a little tighter. Let me just lift it up. I think it's gonna be easier. And then let's do them both at once actually. I think it's gonna be easier. It's gonna be tricky so it doesn't pop out. So let's just bring this here. So if we start like this, it's really cute. You can't really see the beads, but they're, they're kind of cute. But the more we tighten it up, the better it's going to be. So you want to tighten it up, but you don't want it to pop out. So let's just see what we can do here. Maybe what we can do is just like hold it in place. Let's go hold this here. And let me get my other pliers. A lot of people ask me where I get these pliers. And last time on the live stream, Jody had looked up that brand, Cresta, and she found it on Amazon UK. But when I looked it up, it wasn't the same pliers. These ones are round, the ones that she said were flat. And so I still haven't been able to find these, um, I haven't been able to find these pliers. So let's go around. I'm definitely missing the chat. And so I'm really sorry about that. But uh, please, just if you have any questions, just ask me after. And uh, for now, I'll just keep going with this. So let's just keep going. We're going to bring this, you want to bring the, if you want to make this tighter, just bring it here and kind of bend it around as best you can. Okay. We're going to bring this around and it looks pretty good. I think it's pretty solid. Okay. We might want it a little bit more. Okay. We just keep bring this around. Yeah. This is the hard part is getting it nice and tight in there. So we're just going to keep playing with it, bring it in there, bring it around. Yeah, I think that should be pretty tight. That looks good. I think it's going to be in there pretty good. And then you can always put some wires at the back. If you think it's going to pop out, you could definitely put some wires at the back. So we're just going to bring this one up. Okay. And let's form a loop. So if we bring this one here and maybe this one, I'm just going to, cause I want to secure one of them. So let's just bring this one around and secure it in place. Okay. Just, I just did one like round turn around here. And now this, I think you could definitely play around with it. And I like the idea of doing a double loop. So let's bring this forward, hold this in place and do a kind of a double loop around because I really do like the look of that double loop. So let's just bring that around and bring the double. Let's just, we'll twist one wire at a, at a time. So we're going to bring this one around. Okay. And bring it around here. Okay. We're going to bring that. Whoops. It wound around the other one. That wasn't good. Okay. Let's just bring that one up and bring that around behind around here. Okay, and then we're going to clip it. We'll clip that one there. And then the second one. So now we've got the other one that we want to do. So bring that one around. We can even come to the other side. Let's see how that looks if we bring it around to the other side. I think it works. There we go. So we're going to bring that around here a couple of times. And then if you find it's too uh, short, to manipulate, we're gonna bring it in here and clip that. Okay, and bring that in here. And we can push, the, like these are kind of spaced apart a little bit, but we're gonna just bring them together a little bit. So that's cool, that's a little, oh, he's really cute. So now I'm gonna <laughs> love the double loop. The double loop is fun, eh? Yeah, oh, I'm missing all kinds of, I'm going to, oh, Neil's on. Okay, missing, uh, she, you recognize Callie right away, yeah. So now I'm going to spread these, these beads around a little bit. 
because now you can go around and even them out a little bit and push this down a little bit if you have to. Like I have too many beads on that side, so we can definitely like go around. It's a little tricky, but you can go around and, and play around with them. Yeah, so see, if you do this, if you put it flat and push them around, this is where my fingers start to seize up if you're like pushing too hard, right? But it's, it's all good. So let's just bring them around because yeah, this side ended up being like a little too spaced out and the other side were too tight together. So now you could do this. You could use your pliers too. Uh, just be careful not to uh, break or like snap the, the wire uh, if you're using your pliers. But yeah, so I think we, we do want to bring it around a little bit to tighten it up. We could do that. And now it looks like it might pop out a little bit. So that's the problem. So now what I'm going to do so it won't pop out is let's go ahead and add some wires to the back. So I'm going to get some thin. I'll just use a thin wire. I don't think it matters if it's like super thick. And we'll just add some wires to the back so it's going to stay in place. Be a cute pendant. Yeah, it'll be a cute pendant. And I hope Amber gets it this time because the other one got lost, which was super sad. So let's hope this one arrives in one piece. Yeah, our post offices are closed to today, but I'll go tomorrow and, and pop it in the mail. So there we go. So we're going to bring this down here. And... And then maybe you'll get both of them at the same time. You never know. So now I think it's, we're just going to try to, I don't know if we need to do it in any particular, you know, order, but let's just go ahead and kind of weave this across the back so it holds in place. Okay, so we're going to bring this around and try to hold it in place. And then I can always like tighten it up after. So we're just going to kind of stitch it here bring it around. The back is not going to show, so it's really, it's not a big deal at all. We just want to make sure it's not going to pop out. So we're just going to keep going here as much as we can. And I guess I could have made like a star shape type of thing, but, uh, but I didn't really think about it in time. So so yeah, you could definitely wind it any way you want. I'm just going to finish one end here. Okay, so we're just going to take this, pull it tight, and then finish one end. I'll bring it around, push it a couple of times. So it'll go through there. There we go. So we can just like cut one end off here. And then... We're going to bring this one down here. Okay, we don't want to pull it too much because it's going to pull out of the front too. So maybe my weave on the side should have been a little bit bigger. That's possible. And, you know, if it's not solid enough for a necklace, if it's going to pop out, you could always just use it for a sun catcher as well. So, you know, for a sun catcher, you don't have to be too meticulous about making sure the piece doesn't pop out because it's just going to sit there. It's not going to get any wear and tear whatsoever. So there we go. So we're going to do that. And we, I'm going to fix that up after, but for now, let's just make sure the front's okay. So now we're going to bring it back and pull it to the front a little bit. Yeah, see, it's got a little bit warped out of shape, so we can just push it down a little bit and play around with it. Yeah, so maybe got a little bit tight. That's the thing, you have to, it's the fine balance of uh, not pulling it too, too tight. So, cause if you pull it too tight, then it's going to uh, pull these edges in. So it's got a little bit, a little bit warped out of place, but it's not too bad. We just maybe pop that one up a little bit. And this, let me just see what I can do with this. Oh yeah, we want to make sure this is centered. Okay. And yeah, just this side here got a little pushed out of shape. So let's just see if we can bring that one around a little bit. I think if we just bring it around, it might work. Just bring it around, like kind of pop, use your pliers to bring this around. It should work just a little bit. Yeah, so sometimes they're better to go more conservatively. Don't pull it too tight because it can it can pull out a place but 
that's pretty good. So there we go, finito. So that's not too bad. So that's what we did today. So we did the few of these little random rings and uh, they worked out not too bad. I think I still like my original ring for the for the lariat necklace here. So that was from, I'll, I'll link up that tutorial before for that uh, for that one there. And uh, doggy's, doggy's so cute. I like the little beads on the sides. So that's something a little bit different. If you want to experiment with the copper foil, uh, you could definitely do that. So, uh, so that's that, guys. So I'm going to flip the screen. It's perfect. Oh, yay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So if you, if you can't wear it as a necklace, you could definitely hang her up. Maybe you'll leave in a little Christmas ornament. That would be cute on the Christmas tree. So I'm going to flip the screen. There we go. Perfect. Good. So now my hair is almost dry after an hour of live streaming. That's cool. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If I missed any comments or a year round ornament. Perfect. If I missed any comments, if you have any questions, just uh, message me on Facebook or uh, email me at info at heatherboydwire.com. Are you going to spread the bale out? You could spread the bale out. You definitely could if you want it split. That's a good idea. Yeah, there's uh, the sky is the limit with the, with these designs. So you could definitely do, uh, do anything you like with it. And if you want to check out the original uh, tutorial for making the plexiglass ornament uh, without the copper foil, it was a different kind of wrap. I'll link that up below. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Amber, for your patience. Uh, and hopefully this one's good to everybody. Everybody hope that this one gets through the mail system. It should be fine. It certainly isn't going to happen twice. And uh, have a wonderful week. If um, Next week is the... Uh, 4th of July coming up and, and our Canada Day, so have, have, a, have a great time if you're celebrating, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see everybody in the Facebook group, the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. Bye!